The work the SAG Foundation is doing is enormously important. From the up and coming actors to the veterans like myself, the Foundation is here to help all of us. As fellow artists, we've all been there. It's crucial that we remember where we came from and help out however we can. For over 25 years, the SAG Foundation has been the industry's best kept secret, and we're out to change that. As natural storytellers, it's great that we have the opportunity to give back through the children's literacy program. A disaster like Sandy really brings it home with how crucial the SAG Foundation is. Their donation drive helped so many people in need. The seminars and workshops are crucial. Working together is what makes us better. The SAG Foundation is a nonprofit organization that relies solely on donations to keep these important programs free for everyone. The SAG Foundation can't do it alone. We need you. If you need help, ask. If you can help, give. We're all in this together. 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 Together, everyone benefits. Join the cause. Back now. There we go. Good evening once again. My name is Dennis Baker. I'm the Life Raft Program Director. Um, thank you for the, our in-house audience for attending. Thank you for everyone that's viewing on the live stream. A couple of things before we get started. Um, we are trying to be social media conscious. That means we're on things like Facebook and Twitter. Um, Facebook.com slash SAG Foundation, Twitter.com slash SAG Foundation. Please check those out. More important is the YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash SAG Foundation. We try to not only live stream, but record most of our events and then archive them there for you to view at later times for you to share. Um, this is going to be a highly informative evening and as I was telling our audience, something that you're going to probably need to watch a couple times to be able to get everything on the live stream page right now as well as the YouTube page will be links to the PowerPoints. So whatever you see, if there's something you didn't quite catch, download those PowerPoints, watch the videos again to begin to continue the um, research that um, and gain the information you each individually need to move forward. Um, lastly, we do function on grants and donations. We are a nonprofit, so if there's any chance for you to be able to give five bucks here, give five bucks there, a little context for you guys for every conversations, life raft, or camp event you attend, that's $17 per seat it costs us. So every time you are at that event, it's $17. So $5 a month maybe is a really good deal if you attend a lot of events and it keeps programs going. Also, as the video stated, we do a financial assistance. So if you are in need, call the office and there's a system you can go through to determine if you're eligible. And also know the money that you do give may be helping the person next to you pay that phone bill because we all know as actors, our income ebbs and flows as well as work. So things to be thinking about. I thank you again for being here. Um, I'm gonna pass it off and we're gonna jump right into it. So let's give a hand to our panels for being here. Thank you, our panelists. And Karen will take it from here. Um, I believe it's the right one. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, good evening. I'm Karen Ortolani. I'm the manager of the LA office of After Health and Retirement. I'm going to talk just briefly about um, our health plan, how you qualify for it. And then I think there's a lot of questions that we'll all be doing at the end. So, and here's my first slide, and it's nice and big. I don't need glasses. A little more? Yes, thank you. Thank you, sound man. Obviously, I'm not in your business. <laughs> Point towards the magical column. 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 <laughs> you got it the first time. I feel better now. It didn't work for him either. <laughs> well, I thought I had a better direct line to the column. All right, where's the techie people? Oh, next slide. Thank you, sir. <laughs> ah, there's, whoa, whoa. I can't read that fast. Oh, this one I'll just read because it is our background. The After Health and Retirement Funds were created to provide comprehensive health and retirement benefits for AFTER members. 
It is important to note that the funds are a separate organization from SAG after the union. I'll probably say that like 20 times as we're going through this. The two organizations do not share computer databases and maintain their own information. Next slide, please. Qualifications. Qualifications for benefits is predicated on your after covered earnings. Covered earnings are earnings received for work under an after collective bargaining agreement or as a full-time staff member of AFTRA or after h and and do not exceed plan maximums. That's people that um, work for stations, we call them station staff, the news people, the radio people. And then after h and that would be me. When you work under an AFTRA contract that calls for an employer to submit a contribution, that employer is required to submit a report detailing the work performed and the amount you were paid. He was talking about they don't get any money from your dues, we don't get any money from you either. It's all employer paid. The report and contribution are reviewed for accuracy and you are accredited accordingly. We really recommend that people that do after work that you check your earnings from time to time because sometimes you've qualified for health insurance and you didn't even know it because you weren't checking. He did the next slide all on his own. <laughs> Eligibility and participation health plan. To qualify for after's health plan, you must earn at least four, excuse me, $10,000 in four consecutive quarters or less for individual plan coverage, or $30,000 for family coverage. Sometimes people think that means every quarter. Oh no, four consecutive quarters. You can have a great job for 10 grand, or you could have a little here and a little there, and eventually it adds up to that within those quarters. You will become eligible on the first day of the second quarter following the quarter in which you meet the minimum covered earnings. When a member qualifies for coverage, a notification is sent along with an enrollment form. So once you qualify, we send you a packet that says, congratulations, you've qualified for health insurance. When the enrollment form with supporting documentation is received within the time allotted, an invoice is sent. You fill out the form, you send it back to us, that means that you would like the coverage. Not everybody does. Sometimes they have coverage other places. Once the premium has been received, the coverage will be activated beginning the first day of the following quarter. Next slide, please. Here's just a little calendar um, that just tells you once you make those earnings, when your coverage begins, because we get asked that question a lot. It skips a quarter. So if you've earned all the money by September 30th, then your coverage is gonna start January 1st. We explain what quarters are to people a lot, especially doctor's offices when they call. <laughs> What's a quarter? And I start doing, you know, like the pie in school and they, <laughs> they cut it up into four sections. That would be a quarter. Um, June 30th, for example, you would start October 1st. Next slide, please. Major medical program, which includes professional services such as doctor visits, surgeon, physical or occupational therapist, chiropractors, lab testing. That's all under your major medical. There's a hospital program, so if you need to go to the hospital, that would be covered. Mental health and chemical dependency program, not that that is ever needed in this profession. <laughs> Wellness program, that's your puppy shots, as I call it, vaccinations, your, your checkup each year, your physical. A prescription drug program, a dental program, group insurance, it's a life insurance policy that's connected to your health insurance. And loss of voice, that's kind of unusual for insurance coverage, but if you can't speak, it's really hard for you to work. Next slide, please. Accurate records and life events. After h &R is a non-contributory jointly trusteed benefit fund. Boy, that's legalese. That just means that you don't contribute, it's all done by your employer. Keep the fund office advised of any life event changes such as address changes, new spouses, domestic partners, new children, divorces, etc. cetera. Um, changing your address or adding a, sp a spouse with the union, they don't tell us exactly what you're doing. We don't really share information, so when you change the address in one place, you need to change it in other places. Keep accurate records of your earnings and review your yearly earnings statement sent by the fund. That's what I said earlier. Keep track of your earnings. Sometimes um, production companies don't necessarily report to us, so then we have to chase them around and make sure that it happens. Health and pension benefits are based on these earnings. Any incorrect or missing earnings may have an impact on these benefits. Yeah, keep track of it. 
Updating union information will not update the fund information. We don't share it. We don't like each other very much, so <laughs> they keep it a secret. So if you do change something, you need to tell us as well. Most needed forms are available on the website. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a, a new that uh, I know we're talking about the, the Affordable Care Act. This is something new that we're going to be doing starting December 1st. It changes our benefit a bit to the better, actually. Changes include lower co-payments and availability of non-network benefits. That's new. Non-network benefits will be available. Before, you always had to use our value options network. Now you can go to whomever you like. Pre-authorization through value options is required only for inpatient admissions. So if you're just going to a therapist, you don't need to get that authorized ahead of time. You can just go. Outpatient authorizations from value options no longer required. Uh, there's a benefit update that was mailed just recently. Some of you may have received it. It has all this in a little more detail. Next slide, please. That's just a picture of our website. We're quite proud of it. You, you can usually find most things that you're looking for. All the forms and things are there. Next slide. Oh, see, I went through my whole thing in what, eight minutes? Okay. Were you timing me? I Dan was. Was it about eight minutes? It'll give me more time. Exactly. <laughs> that is my plan. All right. Thank you. I give you the clicker, but it doesn't work. Okay. Well, good thing I don't have it then. <laughs> um, good evening. My name is Amanda Bernard. I'm from the uh, Screen Actors Guild Producers Pension Health Plans. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> uh, tonight, I just want to cover um, kind of some background of the plans, um, go over the health plan operations, benefits, eligibility, Affordable Care Act benefits, so um, benefit improvements that have happened in the plan due to the Affordable Care Act, um, then how to get the most from your benefits. So basically, kind of Karen's presentation, <laughs> a little bit different. Um, and then I guess we'll do questions at the end. So next slide, please. Uh, the Screen Actors Guild Producers Pension Health Plans were created in 1960 during a strike against the producers. We first opened our doors in January of 1961. We cover actors and background performers in television, commercials, and theatrical films. Next, please. We have a 36-member board of trustees. So our board is composed of 36 people. 18 of those are producers, and 18 of those are union uh, representatives. We are a separate entity from SAG-AFTRA, and again, no union dues or initiation fees or anything like that are paid into the plans. Um, we're a multi-employer plan, which just means that instead of one employer contributing money to the plan, then we have hundreds of employers contributing to the plan, and we're governed by federal and not state law. Uh, again, this is just the kind of list of laws that regulate the plan, the Internal Revenue Code, ERISA, the DOL is the agency that, uh, one of the agencies that regulates us, um, the IRS, the Affordable Care Act, of course, other federal legislation. We serve 26,000 participants and their families. We receive around 1,100 phone calls a day, and we process about 55,000 claims per month. Uh, again, we're a self-funded health plan, so basically what that means is that we don't pay an insurance premium per person to an insurance plan, and we have uh, coverage under Anthem Blue Card, and basically what we do is we just pay them to lease their network. So the health plan only pays what the actual cost of the claims are, and that's true for the mental health benefit, the prescription drug benefit, and all of that. We don't just pay a set premium, we just pay the actual cost. So any additional cost that's incurred or um, any fraud or anything that happens with, with medical claims or anything like that comes directly out of the health plan and not out of some nameless insurance company. Um, and again, we're governed by federal, not state law. So I had that twice. Uh, health plan benefits. Uh, the medical hospital benefits are paid through Blue Card which is just Anthem's sort of nationwide plan. So you're in the same network if you work here in California or if you go to New York. Uh, prescription drug, it's Express Scripts, which used to be Medco. Uh, de for dental, it's Delta Dental. Uh, mental health, like after h &R, it's Value Options. And Vision is VSP, which is Vision, vision Service Plan. In order to earn eligibility, we use the same uh, 
model that AFTRA's health plan does, which is we look back, every quarter we look back four quarters. And so if you didn't earn enough money in the most recent four quarters to gain coverage, we're gonna look at you again the next quarter. And we're gonna keep looking until you um, earn enough, have enough earnings in order to gain coverage. And then just like in AFTRA's plan, there is what we call a lag quarter. So we allow about six weeks after the close of the quarter to let all earnings be reported to the plan and then we run our processing and then we notify you if you're eligible, we send you a packet, um, a notice of qualification that just says, hey, you're eligible and here's how you can sign up. And once you gain coverage, you do have coverage for an entire year. So it's not like working for a single employer where you only have coverage as long as you work there and maybe for 30 days after. This is, you know, if you earn, earn $15,100, the first quarter, you're good for another year. So you don't need to uh, continue regularly working unless you want to maintain that coverage year to year. And coverage is also dependent on payment of the health plan premium. Under the Affordable Care Act, the health plan is considered not grandfathered. I know you guys are hearing a lot grandfathered versus non-grandfathered. Um, what the non-grandfathered means is basically any of the additional benefits that are provided for in the Affordable Care Act we have to provide. So that's no cost share for preventive services. That little acronym up there just means the United States Preventive Task Force, which is an agency the government has formed to just kind of decide what preventive services should be covered and, and what um, really doesn't need to be covered. So we go by whatever the federal government says and those are the preventive services we'll cover with no cost share. Um, on the appeals regulations, we have We've, we still follow pretty much the same appeals process. The difference is that at the end of an appeal, if the Board of Trustees still denies your appeal, then you do have the right to have an independent review organization look at your claim and uh, give a decision back to the plan. And also, we provide emergency care at the network level of benefits, which we did before the Affordable Care Act, so that didn't change that for us, as well as the provision for physician choice. Um, there's no lifetime benefit maximums now. There are no annual dollar limits on what are considered essential benefits, and we cover children to age 26. So basically, as of their 26th birthday, we would no longer cover the children. Next. Uh, pretty much the best way to get information from your health plan is to be informed. Read the summary plan description in the Take Two so you know what your plan covers, what it doesn't. Um, we list in there anything that is excluded or not covered. Also, anything there's limited coverage for. Some things, not very many. There are pre-certification requirements through the plan. Um, register for the interactive website. This, the website we have is really great. You can go on there once you register for it. Um, you can track the earnings that you have been reported to the plan towards your eligibility. You can see how much additional uh, money and earn, earnings you would need to have in order to gain eligibility. Um, you can also look at your pension and do a pension calculator. You can print your an the annual earnings statements that we send you every year. You can print copies of those. We keep copies of those under your individual account on the website. You can also track your claims and view and print your explanation of benefits. So if, you have a, if you're getting a bill from a doctor and you want to know what the health plan paid for it but you threw away the letter that we sent you, you can go online and you can always look up that explanation of benefits. Um, one, one important point when you register for the interactive website, if we don't have your date of birth on file, if the plan office doesn't have your date of birth on file, you're not going to be able to register just because we need to have a certain number of identifying um, fields and some people I know have had issues with that. So if you try to register and you can't, please call the plan office and we'll walk you through the registration because we really want to get as many people as we can utilizing that resource. So if you have questions about that, please call the plan office. Uh, be a good consumer. Again, use network physicians in hospitals. You get a higher rate of reimbursement when you go network. If you're in Southern California, the uh, Industry Health Network and the Motion Picture Television Fund Clinics are excellent, excellent resources. Um, you also have richer benefits if you utilize those um, choices. And also, just general network utilization. If you, if you use a network physician, you know what your bill is going to be. The network providers are bound by a contract to only charge a certain amount of money. The plan knows what that is, so we pay accordingly, and you're not going to be liable for a balanced bill from providers. Um, keep up with them periodically. 
um, ask them, make sure that they're still in the network. Sometimes they change once in a while. Um, also, non-network emergency and that RAP stands for um, radiology, uh, and I can't remember what the A and P stand for, sorry about that. It's uh, radi radiology, pathology is the P, and the A always just kills me. Um, they're paid at the in-network the in benefit. And again, we, when you use your prescription drug benefit, we have what's called a, th a three-tiered plan where if there is a brand name drug available, but there's also a generic drug available, then you pay the difference in cost. So you can still get the, the uh, brand name drug covered, but not at, a high, not at a rate as high as you would get the generic for. So use generics whenever possible. Use the preferred brand, um, Express Scripts, mail order pharmacy. There are richer benefits if you go through there. There's a maximum um, on that. You also get a 90-day supply. And if you lose coverage, then you now have a choice between the self-pay or COBRA program and the marketplace. And in some cases, not, not every single case, but probably in the majority of cases, what you can find on the marketplace for a premium is going to be less than our, our COBRA um, premiums. So, and I know Dan will get into that. So, next slide. And there we go. <laughs> My turn. Hi, um, I'm Dan, uh, and I'm the director of health services um, at the Actress Fund. For those of you who don't know the Actress Fund, we are not part of SAG-AFTRA. We are a separate nonprofit. We are um, a human services, social services agency for everyone in in entertainment, um, and and our website um, is there actressfund.org. Um, as the health services program. Um, has existed for many years to help people when they, um, if they don't have union or guild coverage or for those, those years that you fall out of union or guild coverage to help you figure out what the most affordable option is for you. We, we don't sell, sell anything. We provide information, education, consultation. Um, now with the Affordable Care Act, um, we are really focusing on explaining the Affordable Care Act to the arts and entertainment community. In March of 2010, um, Congress passed and, and President Obama signed what is officially called the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, sometimes known as the ACA, sometimes known as health care reform, sometimes referred to as Obamacare. I like to think of it as Obamacare's. <laughs> It is not a perfect law, and it is not going to help everyone in this country. It's not going to help everyone in this room. But it does stand to provide um, health insurance to millions of people in this country in what I believe is in an, an affordable way for the first time in our lifetime. And so I, <laughs> so I have the pleasure um, for the next 20 minutes or so trying to explain the Affordable Care Act and um, covered California to you. So health care reform has very little to do, in my opinion, um, has very little to do with people who have full or part-time jobs um, and employer-based health insurance or have your union or, union or guild coverage, who it really has been created to help our, um, our people looking for for coverage for themselves or their families and for small small business, people who aren't eligible for, for employer coverage or, or their union coverage. Um, there we are. So, um, so um, the, what, what hasn't been spoken much about is that the Affordable Care Act has slowly been phased in over the last few, few years, and many positive things have all, already happened. Um, I'm not going to take, take the time to, to go over all the things that have, that have already, already happened, but for, for example, um, when Amanda talked about um, the, the union plans extending coverage uh, for young adults to age 26, last year in California alone, that either kept insured or re-enrolled 3.1 million 
adults in, in California. I mean, that's huge. If the Affordable Care Act did nothing else, that's, that's huge. And, and we don't talk about the, the things that have been phased in and the important things that it's already ready done. Um, the two biggest pieces happen in January when the pre-existing clause goes away and there will be a federal subsidy, um, what they refer to as premium assistance, where the federal government will actually help you pay for your, your health insurance premium every month based on your, your, your income. So part of what the Affordable Care Act calls for is for states to set up a health insurance exchange or, or marketplace. In California, that has a name. Next slide, please. And, that's, and, and in California, that, that health insurance exchange or marketplace is called Covered California. So the mission of Covered California is to increase the number of insured Californians, improve health care quality, and lower costs. Next slide, please. So again, in 2014, you cannot be denied coverage based on pre-existing conditions. This allows equal access for everyone to get health insurance. The question often com comes up, who, who are the insurance companies that are pro providing health insurance through, through Covered California? And they're insurance companies that we all already know. There are 13 um, companies that are selling on the, the exchange, um, including Anthem Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Kaiser, HealthNet. I mean, they're, they're insurance companies that we all already know. And then premium assistance is available to people who buy insurance through the, the exchange, again, based on your, your, your income. And the income level is 400% of the federal poverty level. So this year, that is $45,960 for a single person and $94,200 for a family of four. I, I, again, those, those figures, I think, are pretty generous. 45000 or almost $46,000 probably goes a little further in Ohio, where, where I'm from. Um, but still, $45,960 is, is a generous amount. And so um, um, help, help will be available for a lot of people. And, and Covered California estimates that 2.6 million Californians will be eligible for premium assistance. Um, um, providing affordable care and a, and a standard uh, a standard benefit package. The other important piece that um, that the legislation is hoping for, and the president hopes, uh, the phrase that will be eliminated from the English language is medical bank bankruptcy. You know, most um, most bankruptcy in this country is due to health care care costs, and the majority of those people have health insurance, they just have inadequate health, health insurance with a lot of out-of-pocket expenses. So the, the plans sold through, through Covered California have, have pretty significant limits to the amount of, of out-of-pocket. Next slide. Um, every plan sold on the, the exchange, or every plan sold in 2014 has to have what they refer to as an essential health benefit package. And if you see that, that list, it's a pretty comprehensive list. Um, outpatient services, doctor's office visits, emergency, hospital, maternity, substance abuse, mental health, prescription drugs, labs, um, uh, wellness, pr preventive services, et cetera, et cetera. Next. Now here's the complicated part. <laughs> <clears throat> so, there are four, actually five, but there are four categories of, of plans that will be, be sold. They refer to them as the metal tier plans. Um, and as you see, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And the bronze plan will be the least expensive plan because it has a 60-40 split where the insurance company will pay 60% of the charges, you pay 40% up to the platinum plan where you pay 90% of the, uh, excuse me, <laughs> the insurance company pays 90% of the charges and you pay 10 per percent. Um, 
Uh, next slide. There's a fifth plan called the, the minimum coverage plan. And the minimum coverage plan is, is I, I like to think of it as sort of what we have, have now, sort of a typical high de deductible plan. Um, they're anticipating that, that generally um, people under the age of 30 um, who, you know, who think, eh, I don't get sick, I don't have any health issues, I don't go to the doctor much, I just want you know, a, a, an inexpensive plan, you know, that peace of mind plan in case something terrible happens, in case I get into to an, an accident. Um, and actually, while we're talking about younger people, and there's a lot of younger people here, here in the, the, the audience, you know, the, the success of the Affordable Care Act is really based on, on people signing up um, and, and rolling for, for, for plans. But it, it needs a mix of people. If the only people who sign up through Covered California are middle-aged, older, with health issues, who ha have a lot of medical costs, the, 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 the plans, the, the program really needs younger, healthy people to enroll as well to sort of offset set that. So there's, there's a real push for, um, for young people to, to enroll in covered California plans, plans as well. Next slide. So, um, the other big thing that, that's happening is, is the, ex, the expansion of, of the Medi-Cal program. So the Medi-Cal program, Medicaid, in the other 49 states, California special. We have our, our own name for the, for the federal Medi Medicaid program. Um, historically, being, so Medicaid, Medi-Cal, is, um, is free health insurance provided um, to low-income in, people. But in California, being low-income doesn't get you much. So in California, you have to be low-income and pregnant, low income with children, low income and on disability. You have to be low income and something else in order to be medical medical um, qualified. The um, ch so essentially, childless adults have not been medical eligible in in California. The federal government, as part of the Affordable Care Act, has said that, that the states that impose additional eligibility other than, than income in 2014, that needs to go away. And that income is the only, the only eligibility criteria. Um, and they're raising the income limit from poverty level to 138% of poverty level, which this year is 15,004. Um, and the, the federal government estimates that about 16 million people across the, the country will become Medicaid, Medi-Cal um, eligible, just by doing away with the additional eligibility requirements and um, raising the, the income level. Um, there are certainly, um, there are certainly um, private doctors um, who take Medi-Cal, a lot of Medi-Cal um, um, pr providers are through the, the community clinic system, what we, you know, what we think of as the, as the free clinic or the sliding scale clinic. And, um, LA County has a, a huge, um, uh, a, a huge network of free and sliding scale cl clinics. I know there are people um, probably watching this through the live stream who live in other, other areas. Um, I, I think in, in my work, most, most, are, most areas of the country have, you know, have a good network of free and sliding scale, scale clinics. Um, one of the concerns that I have is, is the community clinic system prepared to handle um, the increased volume? Um, the Affordable Care Act has, has given the, com the community clinic system um, a lot of money, a lot of resources have been put into the community clinic system to expand services, hire and train additional staff. And I think we'll, we'll wait, wait and see. I mean, in LA County, certainly the community clinic system is already overburdened. Um, um, if any of you have tried to access it um, and try to get into, you know, to the, to the free, free, free clinic. So that's, 
Um, that's a con concern, fingers, fingers crossed. So the question is, in 2014, do I have to have health insurance? And the answer is yes, through an employer, through your union, through a government program like Medicare or, or Medi-Cal, or purchase privately, or you have to pay an, an annual penalty. And the penalty structure is, is there for 2014, 2015, 2016, and beyond. Um, I know a lot of people say, huh, you know, I, I have to pay, pay a penalty. I mean, I, I, I see this, pardon me, I see this as an incentive, you know, for, for people to, to really get get insured. I mean, the whole purpose of the Affordable Care Act is to increase um, the, the number of insured people in this country. So I, um, the first year especially, I mean, there's, it's not much of a, of a penalty, um, but, um, and again, you know, the slide in your, in your handout shows how it expands over time. Next slide. So, um, individuals looking for insurance will go to the Covered California website, and the Covered California website is the only way to receive premium assistance, um, the, the federal subsidy to help you pay for it every month. Um, the Covered California website is tied into the insurance company, the federal government, and the uh, IRS. And, um, and so when you go and look at a plan, let's say you select an Anthem Blue, Blue, Blue Cross plan, there's, um, you put your income data in, it will tell you um, based on, on the cost of the plan and your income what your, it, it will tell you if you're eligible for, for premium assistance and then it will tell you what you have to pay every month and what the federal government need, needs to pay the insurance company every month. It's also tied into the IRS to make sure that you're putting um, accurate income data in. Um, this is probably um, as good a time as any to, to sort of sidebar and, and talk about um, people who work in entertainment who have fluctuating income. And I will say that initially Covered California did not take all of you into account when they created this the, the system, but I will tell you that the 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 unions um, and a lot of other people said, whoa, whoa, whoa! You know, not everybody has a has a regular job or has a regular income, and so um, they have take they they I when you go to the to the website and put income data in, there are a, a variety of ways that you can actually do do this. Um, just to finish on premium assistance, so if you're eligible for premium assistance, you can take the premium assistance up front um, and just pay your share every month. And if your income changes during the course of the, the, the year, um, at tax time, you may need to pay some of that, that back. There, uh, Covered California is actually telling people that if you have uh, uh, a change in income during the course of, of the, the year, either up or down, that you notify them as soon as possible and, and they, uh, they'll adjust your premium assistance. Um, or if you weren't eligible, you know, maybe you, you, you will be now, but they will adjust that so that you don't get stuck having to pay um, uh, uh, a large sum of money back at tax time. So you can take the premium assistance up front. You can take a partial um, uh, premium assistance. You can take a portion of it during the, the, the year and adjust it at tax time. Or you can pay the premium up front and, um, and perhaps get a, a bigger return uh, when you do your, your, your taxes. I mean, I'm not sure that a lot of people are gonna want to want to do that, but sort of the whole benefit of this is to, is to get help to pay for it every month. Um, so when people are signing up now, um, because open enrollment started o October 1st, people are actually signing up for plans that will go into effect January 1st. So when you put your income data in, 
now, you're actually putting in 2012's um, tax return info, and you're putting in your um, adjusted gross income figure. I'm sure a lot of people sitting here in this room, whatever they, they, they claimed in 2012 may not be relevant today, right? Your income may, may have gone up, gone, gone, gone down. So what they have, what they say they have done, and I haven't actually, actually seen it because trying to get onto the website for the enrollment process is a little nuts at the moment, but what they said is that you can put an estimated, um, if you don't want to use the prior year's tax return, if you think your income's going to, to be different this year, you can use, use an estimated tax amount um, and they'll base premium, premium assistance on that and then it, it will be adjusted at tax time or if you need it adjusted during the course of the year, you can do, do that that as well. Next slide. Um, can we get to the Covered California website? Okay, cool. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna, um, how many people have already looked at the Covered California website? Some of you, okay. Oh, there it is, okay. Um, so um, this is the, their, their homepage. Um, lots of good, good information on it. But um, the start here, um, is where you actually click to um, enroll in, in plans. You put some basic in information in, it will then bring up the, the plans that you're eligible for. You can take a look, look at plans and um, um, so select a plan, enroll. If you wanna get a sense of what's available, what things cost, and if you're eligible for premium assistance for, for the federal subsidy to help you pay your insurance every month, would really su suggest that you go to the Shop and com Compare tool, which is the middle, middle box uh, at the bottom. If you go to, go to the Shop and com Compare tool, you put some basic information in, your um, zip code, your age, your, your um, income, and it will give you a good estimate of um, what plans you're eligible for, what things are going to cost, and again, how, um, are you eligible for, for premium assistance? Um, it's a pretty, it's, it's a rough estimate, but it's a pretty good, good, um, um, it's a pretty good in terms of the, the information it provides. I think, uh, again, I would encourage you all to, to check that, that out just to see what's, what's available. Um, uh, before you actually go through the the enrollment process. All right, we can go back to, that's fine. We'll just scroll through quickly. Now might be the time for, for you to tap dance. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get back to where we left off, Michael? Okay. Oh, we could sing. We could all sing. While we're, let's see, where did we leave, leave off? So, um, oh, perfect, thank you. Okay, up, back up, uh, forward, one more. Perfect, okay. So, um, open enrollment started October 1st and runs for six, six months. Again, any plans people enroll in at the moment um, start January 1st, so October, November, de December, people enroll in a plan, pay their first, first premium, excuse me, to start in, in January. Um, 
um, folks need to enroll. If you don't have health insurance and you want to avoid the penalty, you need to enroll in a plan by March 31st. Because if you don't have health insurance by March 31st through, through the Covered California um, uh, marketplace, you're stuck. Um, um, the, there are exceptions. So if you come off of employer coverage, if your COBRA ends, if, you, um, um, if, you're, if your union or guild coverage ends, I mean, there are ways to enroll in plans from April to October. But, but essentially, um, the open enrollment period, th the first year, is six, six months, and you need to enroll in a plan um, to avoid, avoid the penalty by March 31st. And then every year thereafter, the open enrollment period will be October 15th to December 7th. Um, uh, let me talk for 30 seconds um, on, on the SHOP program, the small, small bu business program. Um, I started out saying that, that who the Affordable Care Act really helps are, are folks looking for, for um, coverage for themselves and or their, their families and for small, small business. So there are also affordable small business um, uh, health insurance programs. Small, California defines small business as two to 50 employees. So again, there's, there's um, affordable plans on the Covered California website for, for sm small business. And next slide. And then um, for small business, there's, there's a, a small business tax credit. That's actually one of the things that started immediately. So it was available during, during um, the 2010 tax year that um, um, employers, small business employers who offer health insurance can recoup some of that money back. Both for-profit and non-profit um, businesses can recoup some of the amount of money that they've paid for health insurance premiums for their, their employees back at, back at tax time. Next slide. So um, there are, some of you may have picked things up on the table. Um, and, um, but if you didn't, I would encourage you, you to do so. There is a, a, a great brochure um, from Covered California that, that explains in some detail um, what, um, what the health plans are all about and what the Affordable Care Act is all about. The, um, the Actors Fund has a, an information helpline, um, and there's a flyer on that, that as, as well. So we have, we have staff, um, operators are standing by, uh, <laughs> <laughs> 9 to 4, 4.30. Um, uh, Monday through through Friday, um, who are available to answer your your questions, and if you uh, you know stump stump people with a question, they will they will find the answer for you. Um, our helpline um, is much easier to access than the Covered California uh, um, helpline. Um, they of course have a helpline as, as well. They're, Somebody's going to be cringing when I say this. I actually had a question that I didn't know the answer to, so I called the Co Covered California Helpline and was actually on hold for about 20 minutes. Although they, they say their average wait time is about fi 15, but at 20 I got frustrated and actually know people who work there and emailed them directly to get the answer to my, my question. I would encourage you to call the Access Fund, Fund Helpline. Um, with the enrollment process, um, Enrollment is pr primarily being done uh, online through the Covered California website. It can also be done in person and by, by, by mail. You can print um, the application out. Because this is new and different and, um, and exciting, um, but because it's a different way of getting health, health insurance, there's also enrollment assistance available. And one of the things that we are, are doing um, and there's a, a clipboard. And if you want to um, give us your, your name, a way to contact you either by phone or email and your, and your zip code, um, the Actors Fund um, will send that information 
two covered Californias, and someone will contact you to, um, and set up, set up a, a phone date or set up a, a place for, for you to, to go. So if, you, if you're on the w website trying to enroll and you have questions and you want help, you can actually get help um, and somebody can walk you through it on the phone or if you want to sit down face to face with someone. Um, enrollment assistance to make this easier, to make this su successful is a very important part of the first year of, of this program. So it's uh, a little bit about how healthcare is changing. Great, let's give him a hand. So we're going to get um, into some of your questions. Um, if you do have some more as we talk, feel free to write them down and Michael can be around um, to kind of collect them, get them up my way. Um, the one big question we can answer is the, about the merging of SAG and AFTRA Health. That is something that this panel, it's above their pay grade as we say, and it's something that <laughs> people above them make those decisions and they do not have this information. So that is the one question we cannot answer this evening, but we will try to get to everyone else's questions. So we're just going to start it all off right here. Will all PCPs have to accept these policies? How about medical specialists, nonprofit hospitals too? Do you guys, does that make a question make sense? You're talking about the Affordable Care Act? We're talking stuff? about the Affordable Care Act, um, yes. So Dan? Run, will run all question. PCPs have to accept these policies, the Affordable Care um, Health Care? How about medical specialists, nonprofit hospitals? Okay. Um, my best advice is that um, everyone who currently has health insurance should take a look at the Covered California plans to see if you can get a better deal, a more affordable plan, a more comp comprehensive plan for a better price. This is where I say it's not going to help everybody. Um, there are certainly um, medical groups that, um, that are saying they're not going to par participate. In, in the covered California plan. So you may be able to, you know, for example, get a, a Blue Cross plan or, or, a, or a, a Blue Shield plan um, um, directly through the insurance company that will have, uh, that may potentially have a different network than, than, than the, the Blue Cross or Blue Shield um, covered California health plans. Um, I would, you know, if you have providers that you're um, committed to I, and you're thinking about making a change, I would always, you know, call the, call the billing office of your doctor's office, ask them if they're going to take what you're, you know, thinking about changing to. I think the provider directory is on the Covered California website so you can see um, who's participating and who's, who, who, who's not. Um, I hope that answered your, answered your question. Um, great. So um, the next one, if you're maybe starting January 2014, become eligible for union insurance and you've already signed up for, for through Covered California, is it recommended that you drop ACA coverage because now you have in, you know, the union insurance? Um, so that's one. And the second one, does it appear to be any benefit to be stayed? to stay in grandfathered plan for now. If you're in one, can you only shift to ACA coverage during open enrollments? Well, there's a lot of questions there, James. Yeah. Um, so the so first one yes, is if, yes, you, if yes. you, you can only shift during open enrollment unless you have a special consideration, like you've fallen out of, out of coverage. Um, I personally think, um, and I think um, Amanda and Karen would probably agree with me that if you're eligible for your SAG or AFTRA health coverage, why would you not want to take it? <laughs> I mean, it's great. Both plans are great coverage at, at a really affordable price. Um, when you sign up for um, a covered California plan, I mean, just like any health insurance plan, um, you're paying on a monthly basis. You can um, drop it. Um, with a you know with a month's notice, um, so no you you're not stuck you're not making any sort of long term commitment. Um, I still think the um, the union plans are great plans and um, um, at a at a great great price. So um, if you're a performer working in Los Angeles but reside out of California, are you eligible for um, covered California? 
One more time, Dennis. So if you're an actor working in Los Angeles, working in California, but your residence is outside of California, or so out of the states, is that make, does that make you eligible for cover California? Are we playing stump, stump the panelist? I'm um, um, I, I, they just well, the question. Let's, let's see. I mean, I, no. Okay. No, if if you um, you you need a California you need a California address you you need a California zip code, um, um, you you know the um, uh, Affordable Care Act plans of the the marketplace is open in all fifty states. Not all fifty states have created their own marketplace like California has. Um, some states are re relying on the on the federal marketplace. But um, you do need to um, enroll in a plan in your um, state of residence. I just want to add to that because we've sort of been poking around in the Cover California website as well. And there are uh, plans in the marketplace called multi-state plans. So you can enroll in those. And so if you're working in California at one point in time, but you know maybe you're going to be working out of state, um, then they would have the networks in those other states as well. So when you're online and you're looking at that, then you know look for the, the multi-state plans. To throw something into that, there's a lot of people that live here and work in Vancouver, which wouldn't be us at all. So I guess they would have to stay with the covered California plan. Okay. So this is an after question. Um, if the eligibility is $10,000 for AFTRA, does that include residual pay, gross wages? This is like a party line answer. That is dependent on your AFTRA specific contract. Some contracts do cover residuals, yes. Some do not. Some cover costume and mileage and meals. Some do not. So you really have to look at your own specific contract and your union rep can always help you with that. How does all of this relate to people who may be on Medicare? Um, the Affordable Care Act actually says very little about <laughs> Medicare. Um, the, there are two um, provisions in the Affordable Care Act for, for, for Medicare. One is the, um, the expansion of pre preventive services. And so um, we didn't really talk much about what preventive services in, includes, but the, you know, the federal government has a very long list of what they consider to be preventive services. So it's things like an annual physical for women, an annual female health exam, um, flu shot, um, you know, a, a number of things. I, um, I recently got a, um, an email from my doctor's office telling me that my, um, that my tetanus shot had, had expired. So I went to the doctor's office, got a tetanus shot, did not pay the office copay, did not pay for the shot. I mean, a, that's, that, a tetanus shot's considered preventive, uh, a preventive service. It was totally, totally free. Um, so there's, a, again, a, a, a whole list um, of what's considered to be pre preventive services. And that's included in, in, in Medicare. The other provision for Medicare is Medicare Part D, which is the prescription drug plan. So um, for, for those of you who are familiar with, with Part D, you pay, um, currently you pay 25% of your prescription charges up to a certain dollar amount, and then there's you know, what they refer to as the coverage gap or the donut hole, and then you, you're responsible for 100% of your uh, prescription drug charges up to the next ceiling amount, and then and then your, your prescription drug coverage kicks back in. So that, that coverage gap that um, is getting smaller every year and will eventually go away. Um, um, so those, those are really the two, um, the two enhancements to, to Medicare as a part of the Affordable Care Act. Um, um, folks who have Medicare and are looking for, um, you know, Medicare pays, uh, in ge generally speaking, 80% of, of your charges, and so a lot of people, um, if it's in their budget, get a supplemental plan to, to cover the other 20%. Per, per, percent. Um, the, the marketplace, the uh, Covered California, um, is not selling uh, Medicare supplemental or Medigap plans, so you would still go about getting those the same way that you always have. 
And we both have one of those plans. There's a SAG senior performer, and we have a senior plan as well. So which, if, you, if you qualify for that. Which, which again, if you qualify for, um, for those, those plans, they're take the best it. deal in town. Yeah, take it. And if you, if you have Medicare, then under the Affordable Care Act, then you've met that requirement to have individual coverage. So you don't have to pay any penalty or anything like that. So as long as you have Medicare, if you're eligible, then you're considered as meeting that individual requirement. Um, and I also just wanted to add to the list of preventive services that Dan was mentioning. If you go to um, healthcare.gov or if you go to the, plan, the SAG plans web, website, sagph.org, we have an Affordable Care Act page there, and then that also, there's a link on there to the list of preventive services. Oh, great. Um, okay, so along with premium assistance, how does cost sharing benefits help a person? Um, so it's going to be complicated to, to explain. Um, so depending on your on your income so for example with with a silver plan which is a 70 30 split depending on your on your income um, a, a silver plan ha may have a and i don't ex know the exact figure so i'm just making making th things up let's say it has a 30 dollar office visit um, copay um, and you you pay a certain amount of money you have a certain amount of out of pocket it expenses the cost sharing piece of that so if you're if you choose a silver plan you may be eligible for an, what they call an enhanced silver plan with cost sharing so that um, six um, that 70 30 split may actually based on your income improve to 87 per percent in in instead of instead of 30 so um, again th with sil silver plans there is um, there uh, depending on your income there may be enhancement less less out-of-pocket expenses um, more again the, the terms the term is cost cost sharing but but you you may have less less share, share of cost and that's that's a that's a real sort of um, <laughs> lame explanation but I but I hope that that answered the question um, what are the why are the price differences from provider to provider so maybe on the silver plan Blue Cross versus Health Net or in the other providers is there a reason why the prices may be diff, um, different um, um, I, I mean different Different insurance companies historically have always offered, um, have always had different pricing. As I've looked at them, I mean, I've always, I've always said a comparable plan is um, from insurance company to insurance company is not significantly different in cost. And when I've looked, when I've gone to the shop and compare tool to what they refer to as the online ca calculator. Um, there, there's some difference from from plan pl plan to plan from insurance company to to insurance company. I don't think it's really sig significant. I think I think some of the differences could be due to the contracts that the different insurance companies have with the providers and what they're already committed to pay the providers for. Um, I know in the news there was um, comments by Kaiser and that Kaiser in entering covered California were were entering there at a higher premium because they felt that they were a good organization and that the demand for a, a Kaiser policy would be good, so they entered the marketplace at a higher premium. Um, so I hope that it um, For the SAC plan, does it cover medical treatment abroad? Yes, we do cover medical treatment abroad. And so do we, because we know you don't just stay home all the time. You go places. Um, it says the, the pay is quarterly for plans one and two, then how does that translate to having monthly payments? It says if it's if if this is referring to the the premium payments, um, I know we have the quarterly premium payments uh, on our website, and you would just divide by three to get the the monthly payments. So 
that, I guess that answers. So there's a totally cost, but then you divide it, and that's how the monthly cost comes into. Correct, correct. How is income for spouse determined if husband is on Social Security or Medicare, and Medicare? I assume that this is for Dan, so I'm assuming they're talking about maybe through ACA. How is income for spouse determined if husband is on Social Security and Medicare? They're looking at household income. Um, and so I think the, the, the amount of one's social security would be con considered as part of the, the, the household income. So that would be a factor into it. Correct. Got it. If you already have an insurance plan that you are paying for but don't like the deductibles or the coverage it offers, are you eligible to go to Covered California and find a better plan or get assistance in paying your premiums? Absolutely. And, and again, I, I, mean, I think I, I already said, said that. I, I think everybody should take, take a look um, and see if you can get uh, essentially a better bang f for your buck. Um, um, I think it's worth everyone seeing, you know, if, if, you, if you don't have great, great coverage, we, we know that all the plans sold on the marketplace are, have that essential benefit package, that very comprehensive um, list of, of services. So it, it's, you know, it's, good, um, it's good, good comprehensive care um, and it, worth taking a look to see if you can get a better price. Um, this person said, I would like to know how child performers will be affected. Generally, age isn't an issue in income tax reporting. Will there be an exception simply based on child earning wages being covered by their parents, or an exception that children don't have to provide insurance coverage for themselves? <laughs> Did that make sense? So I need to repeat the question. Are, are you asking if it's a child and they want to do the covered insurance? I can uh, As opposed to we have children that qualify for coverage for us, and they're on their own. I can simply repeat the question. Yeah, okay, Will there it's like be, Jeopardy, you yeah. only repeat it twice. Will there be an exemption, ex exemption, excuse me, will there be an exemption ba simply based on child earning wages being covered by their parents, or an exemption that children don't have to provide insurance coverage for themselves? Again, this is child performers. So you're asking if the covered, if the requirement to have insurance includes children? Am I the only one not getting this? They're looking pretty blank, too. Okay. So it's, you're not quite sure. I, I'm not. Okay. I'm not sure. We can say then that they need to further explore this. Okay. We'll keep going. This is it. Keep, please. <laughs> um, are the dollar amounts staying the same for the coming year in order to qualify for Plan 1 and 2? Yes, they are. Um, you guys are answering faster than I can read the next question. Um, if I qualify for Plan 1 SAG insurance by the end of the year, which means my coverage, would start, my coverage would start April 1st, can I sign up for the ACA coverage for January through March and then cancel it for April 1st? My understanding is yes. My understanding is yes. I could make it anonymous just to, <laughs> to make it sound better. <laughs> Um, okay, you're probably already covering this, but can you please have the panelists address the cost of the COBRA plans available through SAG currently un under the new law? Is there a difference in prices for the same coverage? Maybe a little more about COBRA. Yeah, so under, under the Affordable Care Act, that really doesn't change COBRA at all. The way that the COBRA rates are determined is they're determined based on actual claims costs. So every year then the plan looks back on what the actual claims costs have been and there's a certain percentage of the claims cost that we can that we can charge so we can charge up to 103 percent of what the actual claims cost was and so that that becomes our co our cobra rate and as everybody knows those rates are are pretty darn high again because they are based on on actual claims experience and believe it or not even with those high premium rates uh, the cobra participants are still hi highly subsidized by the plan because the people that pay those large premiums are usually the ones that are using the benefits. So if you are otherwise healthy and you um, don't have any pre-existing condition, not even pre-existing conditions, but if you're otherwise healthy, then chances are you can go and get a much, much better rate on the marketplace and even possibly to have be subsidized, especially based on your income. Um, if you're pretty high income, 
And you want to look at that. In some cases, the COBRA rates, believe it or not, would be less than what you could find out on the marketplace. Because if you have that higher income, you're not getting that subsidy. So it's definitely worth it to, to take a look at. If you're, if you're losing coverage with the health plan, look at the marketplace first. Because you, I, I really don't think anybody wants to pay what those COBRA rates are. So look at the marketplace first and see what's offered there. But here's the tricky piece about, about COBRA. So you say, oh, yeah, I, I, I love my SAG insurance. I love my, my, my after coverage. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to pay, pay the COBRA. Um, I'm going to make, make the COBRA payment. You pay it a month, two months, however, however long. And ultimately, you say, ooh, you know, that's a lot of money. It's not s sustainable over the 18 months. You can only enroll, uh, again, keep in mind that you can only enroll in a, in, a, in a marketplace plan, in a covered California plan, during open enrollment. So if you, uh, let's say your, your COBRA, your self-pay starts in January, and you pay January, February, March, April, and then it's like, I can't really afford this. Failure to make a COBRA payment or dropping dropping your 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 COBRA does not make you eligible. That's not a special event to enroll in a covered California plan. You can only you can only drop your 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 COBRA during open enrollment. So keep keep that 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 in mind. And so I think Amanda just gave good good advice. When you become COBRA eligible, take a look. Um, at, at the exchange first to see what, what you can get and what it will cost. Is there a 30, there's always like a 30 day requirement, like if you lose SAG coverage and you're eligible with us, we give you that 30 days to use that life event to come on that very next day. Is it the same with the covered? If you lose your earned coverage and rather than do COBRA, you want to do the Affordable Care Act, do you have to notify them and sign up right away, or do you miss that window and have to wait for the open enrollment? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the time time frame is. Um, I have seen that um, in writing, and that's not a fact I have in my head. Sorry. <laughs> Panelists dump the panelists. I like this. Well, it's it's one of those when people learn to earn co lose earn coverage, we send them off to Dan's website right away because Cobra is really expensive. And if you have children and you're doing the buy up, pay me the sixteen grand a year. I'll take your kid to the doctor and I'll just pay. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of money. So now, if you have an alternative to that, but it's time sensitive, I think we need to find out. So. People look right away. So Karen will be giving her a direct phone number later in the evening, <laughs> and we'll take care of you. Um, is the minimum coverage plan only available to younger people, or is it also available to older people who are in good health? My understanding is it's available to, to um, everyone. Um, I, I think um, they're just making the, the assumption that, that younger people are the ones who will, who will enroll in it. So it's everyone up to the Medicare people? Correct. Okay. My private insurance is going up next year. Should I shop covered California? Yes. <laughs> I, I <laughs> there you go. Um, how is the 30-day grace period in the marketplace? I think this goes back to, is there, um, also please explain the C-L-A-W claw law. Do you, is that? I have no idea what okay. that so, is. Anybody um, else? Do a little more research on that. Um, maybe call actors when maybe get some questions. And you guys talked about the, the, the 30-day grace period in the marketplace is a little unknown. So that's something that needs a, they need to do further research. Yeah, I think, I think it is 30 days. Uh, I don't want to be held accountable to that. Um, OK, a couple more here. Um, can the federal subsidies be used towards SAG or after health insurance or COBRA premium payments? Uh, no. <laughs> Basically, if you ha they consider um, SAG or after health plan coverage as employer provided coverage. So, if you have employer provided coverage, then you're not eligible for a subsidy. Correct. You, you are not. Correct. Correct. Um, 
So another question, I qualify the, for the, I, um, this person qualifies for the lower SAG insurance plan, plan two, that still requires that person to pay $375 per quarter. Can they get the same insurance through the ACA without qualifying under the SAG plan? Will it be approximately the same cost, lower or higher? They earn about $20,000 a year. Is that something they just need to input into the website and figure out? Yeah, uh, um, again, as I said, I would, you know, I would encourage you to go to the website, take a look at the shop and com compare tool, get some, some you know, pretty good but rough estimates. Um, because if you go to the start here, I mean, you actually start the, the enrollment process, but that shop and compare tool, the online line calculator gives you some, some very good ideas about what things will, will cost. And the, the coverage, again, for all the plans is exactly the same. It, it's all that, that essential benefits list. And as Dan mentioned earlier, too, if you have a provider or set of providers that you regularly use or that you like to use, then also make sure that they're in whatever network you're looking at as well. As Dan demonstrated, the Actors Fund is completely here for you. They will answer your questions as as he demonstrated in a game example of look for the um, answer with you and assist you. That's what Actors Fund is all about. So I want you to think about them as a resource. Continue to do your research. This is a complicated topic that requires a lot of work on each individual's part. But in the mean hand, um, let's give them a hand for getting us started on this yeah. conversation. Thank you for viewing online. For those who are here, we have pamphlets and information to the right, and they'll be here to answer more questions. Thank you for coming. In the cardboard box on the floor, there are little twister things for earbuds. Please take at least one or two or three. We have them from the convention. They're actually quite handy.